Welcome back to our journey into the intriguing world of Freemasonry. In our last episode, we traced its early roots. Today, we are continuing the journey from the 18th century to the present day. We'll explore how Freemasonry spread across Europe, giving rise to distinct Masonic rites. We'll delve into significant shifts, like the initiation of women and the introduction of Egyptian masonry, navigating through the 18th, the tumultuous 19th and 20th centuries, we'll see how Freemasonry mirrored societal changes, faced anti-Masonry movements and embraced diversity. Before we dive in, I'd encourage you to support this project of delivering esoteric content based on peer-reviewed academic scholarship by joining my growing patron community, sending a one-off PayPal donation, joining memberships, super thanking me in the comments or buying my match. All links are in a pinned comment and in the info box. Let the symposium begin. Hello, Symposiast. I'm Dr. Angela Puca, Religious Studies PhD, and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic esotericism, paganism, shamanism, and all things occult, including Freemasonry. In the early 18th century, around 1730, Freemasonry began taking root. The first Masonic knightly order, known as the Order Sublime de Chevalier Elu, was founded in France. During the same period, England saw the establishment of the first Scots Masons Lodges. One such lodge, the Union Lodge in London, initiated Italian painter Jacobo Fabris. In 1742, Fabris founded the Scots Masters Lodge, L'Union, in Berlin, and this ignited the spread of the Scots Master Degree across the continent. This was a significant development in Freemasonry, leading to the creation of new degrees that were practiced in distinct bodies, such as Scots Lodges and Chapters. These bodies or lodges were the foundation of what would later be known as a rite, an organized system of degrees. Several rites emerged during this period, including the strict observance, the Swedish rite, the Bavarian Illuminati, the rectified Scottish rite, the French or modern rite, the York rite, and the ancient and accepted Scottish rite. Each of these rites offered a unique interpretation and practice of Masonic teachings. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to have a video on each of these specific ones or one in particular. A significant shift occurred around 1744 when some lodges began to initiate women. This led to the creation of a new trigradal system the adoption rite. However, it was not until the last quarter of the 19th century that women were initiated into lodges operating in the continental tradition of the moderns. This marked the formation of the mixed order Les Droits Humains in France. In the latter half of the 18th century, a new form of Freemasonry emerged, Egyptian Freemasonry. This form suggested that the origins of Freemasonry were not tied to the medieval crusades, as previously believed, but to ancient Egypt. Key contributors to Egyptian masonry included Carl Frederick von Koppen, who founded the Order of the African Building Masters in 1767, and Alessandro di Cagliostro, who established Cagliostro's Egyptian Rite in Naples in 1767. 77. Masonic rites with an esoteric focus also merged during this time, including l'Ordre de les Ecosens, the Rite Ecosens Philosophique, and the Rosicrucian Rites. The first of these was founded by the Theosophist and Kabbalist Martin de Pasquali in the 1760s. Its teachings were centered around a unique form of theurgy mixed with the philosophy and theosophy of its founder. The Rite Econsant Philosophique emerged as a successor of the Rite Hermetique d'Avignon 
which was founded in 1774. It is often attributed to Dom Antoine Joseph Perteki, though this claim has been disputed by modern scholars. Today, Freemasonry is diverse and inclusive, with male, mixed, and female Masonic orders. Some purely female orders were established primarily after the Second World War. The evolution of Freemasonry, from its origins through the 18th century to its present state, shows a rich history of adaptation, inclusion, and a persistent search for a deeper understanding and enlightenment. During the second half of the 18th century, Freemasonry grew globally, but faced upheaval during the French Revolution and the reign of Napoleon. Rituals changed to reflect a shift from an aristocratic to a middle-class worldview, focusing more on moral behavior than mystical experiences. These changes were reflected in different rituals such as the Schroeder rituals in Germany and the craft degrees of the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite in Paris. The 19th century saw Freemasonry expand into colonial territories. It began to include Jews and Muslims, who were familiar with the central Masonic symbol of the Solomon's Temple from their own scriptures. The first non-Judeo-Christian initiate was a Parsi from India in the 1840s, and the first Hindus were admitted in the 1870s. Freemasonry was used both as a tool of colonial assimilation and as an emancipation tool for non-Christian members seeking recognition from the dominant culture. However, this period also saw the rise of anti-Masonry. In the US, the Morgan Affair led to a significant anti-Masonic movement. In Italy, the Pope issued bulls against Freemasonry as leaders of the nationalist movement were Freemasons. This led to a misunderstanding with French Freemasons, who were predominantly Catholic, resulting in a series of anti-Masonic bulls that continued even after the integration of the Church State into Italy in 1870. The papal bulls against Freemasonry included allegations of plotting against the Church and State, indifferentism, accepting members of any Christian religion rather than insisting on conversion to Roman Catholicism, and advocacy for separation of church and state, which would undermine the Pope's worldly power and the church's monopoly over education. The late 19th and 20th centuries marked a significant evolution in the landscape of Freemasonry, particularly in relation to gender and the interplay with feminist movements. After 1870, as feminism gained momentum, women started to be initiated into the traditionally male world of Masonic lodges. This was a notable shift seen across various countries, including Hungary and Spain, with prominent women such as the Countess Jona Hadik Barkowski and Countess Julia Apraxin Batiani being initiated. As we move forward into the end of the 19th century, we find an interesting interplay of feminism and Freemasonry in France. Here, feminist leader Maria de Rem was initiated, setting the stage for the formation of Le Droit Human, a mixed Masonic order in 1893. LDH adopted rituals for both male and female members, reflecting the growing presence of women in the movement. In the early 20th century, we see the infusion of other ideological currents into Freemasonry. Annie Besant, a feminist leader and a prominent figure in the Theosophical Society, was also initiated into the LDH. She played a key role in imbuing Masonic rituals with Theosophical symbolism, a move that resonated strongly with the cultural zeitgeist and led to a significant growth of LDH. However, the 20th century was not only a time of growth and integration for Freemasonry, it also saw a rise in anti-Masonry, which frequently dovetailed with anti-Semitism. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, a text purporting to reveal 
global conspiracy was used extensively in Nazi propaganda and later in anti-Zionist Muslim rhetoric. Interestingly, this period also marked a softening of the Roman Catholic Church's stance on Freemasonry. Following the Vatican II in the 1960s, conversation began between the Church and Freemasonry, lessening official opposition to the organization. In 1985, British Freemasonry faced opposition from the Methodist Church, which was resolved without any lasting damage to the Masonic reputation. Around the same time, the anti-clerical stance of the Grand Orient de France led to its expulsion from the United Grand Lodge of England, or UGLE, the largest Masonic organization in France. UGLE later laid down the basic principles for Grand Lodge recognition in 1929, creating a criterion to determine the regularity of a Grand Lodge. This led to a division between regular and liberal lodges. But recent years have seen efforts to reconcile these two groups. In the 20th century, the first female-only Grand Lodge, the Order of Women Freemasons, was established. Following World War II, other female Grand Lodges were created globally. Lastly, with the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, male, mixed and female Masonic Lodges and Grand Lodges began to emerge in most of the countries which once belonged to it, marking a new chapter in the history of Freemasonry. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Freemasonry's journey through the 19th and 20th century. If you haven't watched the first episode where I covered the movement's early history, I'd highly recommend you catch it up. If you watched the video up until this point, leave me a stone emoji in the comments. And please let me know what aspects or indeed rituals of Freemasonry you'd like me to dive deeper into in future videos. Any other comment or thoughts are also appreciated. I look forward to reading everything you have to say. If you like this episode and want to keep this project of delivering scholarly content in topics in esotericism online and free for everybody to, to watch and hence contribute to free public education, I would really appreciate it if you consider supporting my work with a one-off PayPal donation by joining memberships, my inner symposium on Patreon, super thanking me in the comments or buying my merch. All links are in a pinned comment and in the info box. And otherwise, I also appreciate other types of support, like for instance, sharing my videos around so that the symposium can grow and flourish. Smash the like button if you liked this video, and I hope you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and activate the notification bell so that you will always know when I upload a new video, I go live or do any random stuff here on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here and stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now. Today we hold